On this episode of Game Shack, it's all about the monitors for your 4K virtual pinball build. I'm going to explain what kind of monitors I use, what you should be looking at when you're building your own variety. I'm going to be talking about back glass, DMD, and main play field, and everything else in between. All that and more coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome on back into the Game Shack. I am your host, JDV for Evil Genius Entertainment. Thanks for stopping by. It really does mean a lot to us that you take a little bit of your time or your day and come on through here and check out this video. If you do like videos like this, please give me a thumbs up on the way out the door. It does help the channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, hit that notification bell. All right, so let's just jump right on into it. All right, so this is the next in a series I have done. I'm building your own 4K virtual pinball game for around $2,000 or less. You can spend more, you can spend less. And a lot of that cost is gonna be into the monitor. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you might save some money and why you probably shouldn't. Anyway, since I came out with the last episode in this series, at Games has announced their new 4K virtual pinball game that started off at uh, $10.99. I think it normally retails for around $1,500. So depending on your budget or what kind of value you think that gives to you, check out my video, my initial impressions on that announcement over there. Anyway, that could be a one-stop shop type build for you if you have that kind of dough laying around and you're not handy with your hands or electronics or otherwise intimidated that is a great way to jump into the hobby of virtual pinball but that at games 4k virtual pinball game is not without its flaws right out of the box and there are two big ones if you're already an established pinball owner or you are wanting to look at a more serious rig than that one and that primarily comes down to the screen size the screen size on that game is only 32 inches which is the actual back box on this particular build whereas this one right here is 42 inches I'll tell you what the brand name is and all that here in a second but really 42 43 inches is about as small as it you want to be if you're actually trying to build a machine that could fool somebody into thinking that it's real you really do need to have a 42 inch screen and then up Frankly, I wish I had put a 48 inch monitor in there just to give me a little bit extra um, length on the, on the left and the right hand side, top and bottom of the play field. And that's because while real pinball games are almost exactly as wide as a 42 inch uh, OLED type monitor, the fact is that they're usually five or six inches longer than a normal TV is. So a real pinball game has a slightly elongated aspect ratio, a little bit longer I guess on either end than does a normal TV set. So what that means is that a 42 inch monitor will be perfectly covered up by a real pinball glass. So this is actual pinball glass from a pinball supplier named Marco. This glass could go right on my pinball game that I have over here. However, because real pinball is about five, six inches longer, sometimes depending on the table, things are gonna feel a little compressed or not wide enough. That is particularly true in some of the stern games and some of the wider body, older type games. However, 42 inches will get the job done and for the most part, makes most tables play absolutely perfect and they'll look fantastic too, but anyway, Size is a big thing in this because if you go below 42 inches, you're starting to go into, well, it looks really good, but it's still clearly a video game. And that is kind of a knock against that at games. Again, not for the price point, but for just somebody who's looking to get into it in a really, really kind of serious way. The other problem with that at games is that it is only a 60 frame per second monitor. It will only ever be capable of 60 frames. So even if you're running a 120 frame type computer in games on it, it's still only going to be 60 frames per second. The monitor just is not capable of 120p. So if you want the most hyper real looking graphics, particularly the way the ball rolls down the playfield, as opposed to slides, you really do want to have 120 hertz. The meat and potatoes of any rig is going to be your main play field monitor. And for that, I chose the LG C2 120 hertz unit, which is from uh, 19, from 2022. 
And I think I got this used for $750, $777, something like that. They're still retailing for around $1,000. There is a newer model from this year, the C3, that does almost exactly the same things. In fact, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. But if you're jumping in and looking at the C2, C3 series, you might want to take a look at that. Maybe one is more appropriate for you than the other. The C1 that's in the same lineup is only 60 hertz, uh, only 60 frames per second. And that's why I rejected that. I did go for the higher end type model. And that's gonna be my overall advice moving forward and anything to do with this build is if you have an opportunity to spend a few extra hundred bucks or a hundred bucks to get something that's significantly better, just go ahead and do it. The poor man pays twice is what they say, right? And that is particularly true in this hobby. So I went with something that I thought was gonna be future-proof and so far it does look like it is a little bit future-proof. A lot of virtual pinball games are still only at 60 or 70 frames per second. So there's some catching up. However, almost all of the new virtual pinball games are at 120 hertz or more. So you really maybe wanna take a look at that. But the real reason I got this was not 60 versus 120 because all kind of uh, normal LED monitors do that for much, much cheaper than $1,000, which this thing still retails for. You can get into a, 40, a really nice non-OLED 42 inch monitor for you know, 300 bucks, maybe 250 if you look around. The reason why this is a thousand bucks, so is that 120 frames per second refresh rate, but more importantly, it's OLED. And what OLED is, and the difference between QLED and just normal LED is that the black colors on your screen get actually black. They can turn black. Each pixel has the ability to go all the way on or all the way off. Each pixel in an OLED monitor has the ability to generate each and every color in the RGB spectrum. So what that does, the effect that that gives you is really gives you a sense of depth in a pinball game that you will not get out of any other non-OLED monitor. The QLED monitors look pretty good. The monitor, from what I can tell in that new ALP looks really good, but there is some kind of wild magic in these OLED screens that just makes this thing pop. So even if you are playing just your standard um, HD type virtual pinball build games on here, they will look better. If you do nothing else but just replace the monitor, they will look much, much better. It is wild the effect that OLED has on here. So, I mean, that's gonna be my, my basic advice to you when you put in your monitor, whatever it is, size it is. If you like 32 inch, hey, I'm not trying to rain on your parade. And that OLED is gonna cost you. It's gonna be the most expensive thing other than maybe your PC in this build. This represents a full half of my $2,000 budget if you buy this thing new, because it's a thousand bucks, but it's worth it. It really is worth it. I would not dream about building a new pinball game without having OLED. It's that important. Okay, so, but what about the, the back glass and what about the DMD? Well, a thing that you have to decide right off the bat is whether or not you want this to be just a two monitor setup or if you want the three. The three can be a little intimidating. I almost went with the two just because I knew it was gonna be a lot more hassle to put it in and of course more money because you actually have to buy the thing, you have to have a cutout for it and all that. And, but I went with three and I'm glad I did. Almost all of the new pinball games that you are going to get, and that is either from Zen, Zakaria, that's VPX, Future Pinball, almost any new game that comes out in 2023 and beyond is going to have options for the three screen setup. It is no longer the bleeding cutting edge of this hobby. Now the backlash I have on here is just $100, 1080, uh, just normal LED type screen I got from Walmart, ONN, and it actually has worked pretty good. I jacked up the contrast of this thing to maximum, and it looks okay, it really does, because again, your back glasses are normally, you know, sometimes there'll be video like this, but normally there's just gonna be a picture and then little boxes where the scoring comes up. You really don't need to have an OLED monitor for this. Same thing for this DMD monitor. If you see, it's got that weird extra long kind of rectangular aspect ratio. I just got that off of Amazon. I think it's for $120. I'll have links to this, to that, and to that down below. Um, I think the, the aspect ratio is 390 by 1080. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it does because it is a different, clearly different aspect ratio than a normal TV set. It does help 
sell the idea that this is a real pinball game and not just a video game that you're playing on your computer. When you get your rig running and you see the difference between say your, your last 1080 screen that was maybe 32 inch of screen, like say the original Alp, and you start messing around with this 42 inch OLED screen, it will, it will blast your mind, the difference. Because really the, the big thing for this is no matter where you go, it looks good. It doesn't at all fade. There's no fading at all. It does not matter what angle you are at. This thing is going to look good. Now, the perspective doesn't change. I don't have this rig set up for that. But when you're just standing right here at the normal position and you get the table, when you change the table dynamics to look exactly the way you want, you know, make the feel uh, aspect ratio fit whatever build you have, really dial in the game have it at 120 frames per second, you get some amazing, amazing results. Like this brand new uh, version of Attack from Mars is absolutely incredible on this. It's, even though I know it's a video game, I built this thing from the ground up, I'm looking at it and it fools me. If, if looking at it, I'm like, man, it just looks so good. Anyway, the secret sauce is OLED. Definitely take a look at spending the extra money. You're gonna be paying almost two thirds more for an OLED than a normal LED. That's just the price of business. If you are really, really serious about getting into this hobby, I would look very strongly at a 42 inch or bigger OLED monitor from a reputable manufacturer. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up this episode of Game Shack. If you dig this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up on the way out the door. It really does help the channel. Love each other, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! Be sure to visit evilgeniusentertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.